You know how I am the one money coach within my recovery group. So I went on my yoga retreat with that recovery group this summer. And one of the founders has taken a money coaching designation. Being one of the founders, she's super well respected. Everyone fawns to her. And it was like this huge announcement yesterday. I'm a money coach. I'm doing this. She's running programs. And my my heart broke and yeah. I'm like, holy crap, what am I supposed to do with this now? I felt like I was insignificant, imposter syndrome. Yeah. I don't matter anymore. Like all this crap. And it was like, oh my God. And I know, I know I don't want to give up, but mm -hmm. I definitely had a real moment yesterday and I've been feeling so good about my business. And so I am navigating that. Yeah. Welcome to the Work Less, Play More podcast for busy entrepreneurs who are ready to ditch the hustle, stop burning out on busy work, and get back to having a life. My name is Lindsay Johnson, aka The Radical Connector, and I've spent the last 10 years teaching first-time entrepreneurs how to get customers and make money. Listen in as I chat with other hustle-recovering business owners as we share our top tips for, you guessed it, working less and playing more. Let's do this. Hello, friends. Welcome to today's special podcast episode where instead of me interviewing people, you're actually gonna get to hear a replay of a coaching session I had with Linda Parmar, a member of my business community. So for those that don't know, we meet every month for a full day of content batching and co-working where we do some coaching. That was a lot of C's. <laughs> Anyways, it came up that Linda was having a situation in one of her communities that was hitting her hard with the imposter syndrome. And so obviously, because it's a coaching session, we went ahead and did a coaching. We applied the four steps that I teach on how to ditch imposter syndrome, how to get unstuck and out of that self-doubt and back into action. Now, oh my gosh, it was so, so good. So I asked Linda's permission to be able to share it here in the podcast. And of course she said, yes. So you're going to hear Linda be vulnerable, but also so this vulnerability is universal. So we're going to dive into that together. You as the listener get to hear how Linda and I work through that. Now, really quickly before we dive in, if you are new to the concept of imposter syndrome, let's talk about what that is and how it might be showing up in your life and in your business. Imposter syndrome, simply put, is the belief that you haven't earned the success that you've achieved and that at any point the world's going to find out that you have no idea what you're doing. Or more plainly, it is the belief that you suck <laughs> and that sucks. Now, I like to give my imposter syndrome a name. I like to give it shape and personify it and take it outside of who I am. My imposter syndrome gremlin's name is Frank. And by naming it Frank, it reminds me that it isn't me. It is not true and it is not who I am. It is simply old tapes from, you know, people in the past or situations in the past that have maybe said some not kind things to me and I have internalized that. And so the moment that you you or me or anybody else out there starts to have a modicum of success, it is pretty common to have that gremlin, my Frank, your whoever, rear its ugly head to remind you that mm, maybe you don't know what you're doing. Maybe you're not good at what you do. And you know what? It's all hogwash. It is not real. And so we're going to dive into that today. Before that, though, I want to play with ways that imposter syndrome might be showing up for you. One of the most common things I hear from people is how it tends to whisper in your ear at night when you're trying to sleep, telling you you're bananas to think you could be successful or that you're not good at what you do. It also makes you hold back and stop showing up online. It makes you doubt yourself and the very framework of your business, things like your revenue streams, your offer rings, your website, your online content, that upcoming panel you're going to be speaking at, or the podcast you just launched. It makes you make yourself smaller and less of a perceived target. After all, if no one can see you, then no one can criticize you or find out you're a fraud, right? Ugh. For some, it can even make you overcompensate by being aggressive or egotistical in order to hide that fear of failure or self-doubt inside. No matter how it shows up, it makes sure that you are not at your your best. So when does imposter syndrome tend to hit? Well, it hits most often when you're leveling up in some way in your life or business. 
Usually, once you start seeing results in your business growth or you start getting more visibility and attention online, it is a sign that you are coming out of your comfort zone and leveling up. And listen, I gotta tell you, the more successful you are, the more it's going to show up. It is almost inescapable. It is a sign that you are leveling up, that you are coming out of your comfort zone and doing something big. Before we even dive into the recording of Linda's and my coaching session, let's just take a moment to share that mindset and thank I don't know if I go so far as to say thank, but just acknowledge that imposter syndrome is there because you are growing. And while it can be a bad thing if it holds you back and makes you shrink, in a lot of ways, it's kind of welcome because it lets you know that, yep, I'm on to something and I'm doing something big here. And that is scary AF. And I'll tell you, it is a normal part of growth. Almost everyone experiences it. Yes, even those super successful leaders that you follow online who seem to have it all together, they get it from time to time. And as I said, it totally sucks. So you need to get ahead of it early by developing tools for cutting imposter syndrome off at its head. And that's exactly what you're gonna hear happen during this coaching session with Linda. Be sure to stay with me until the end of this podcast because I'm going to break down those tips for you and tell you where you can go get a special worksheet to help you work through your own imposter syndrome. In the meantime, let's do this thing. All right, what's going on? Okay, so... You know how I am the one money coach within my recovery group. Mm -hmm. So I went on my yoga retreat, like with that recovery group this summer. And one of the founders has taken a money coaching designation Mm -hmm. being one of the founders. She's like super, super well-respected, like everyone fawns to her. And now she's like, It was like this huge, big, like announcement yesterday. I'm a money coach. I'm doing this. She's running programs and my heart broke. And I'm like, holy crap, what am I supposed to do with this now? I felt like I was insignificant, imposter syndrome. I don't matter anymore. Like all this crap. And yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of that. I just a bit a little bit. And it was like, Oh my God, like, and I know, I know I don't want to give up, but Mm -hmm. like it, I definitely had a real moment yesterday and I've been feeling so good about my business. And so, yeah, I just am navigating that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So why don't we approach it from the imposter syndrome angle first? Okay. Okay. So What is some of the self-talk that's come up for you? That my business is going to fail because everybody's going to go to her instead of me. Okay. Yeah. What else? That I'm insignificant and that I don't matter, which is self-talk that happens all the time anyways. Mm -hmm. What else? I would say those are the really big ones, mostly that I'm going to fail. Yeah. And that she's better than me. Yeah. That she's better than me part. Okay. Okay. So we know from the imposter syndrome module, the first step is to acknowledge what you're actually feeling and what's coming up. Yeah. And then the next step is to ask yourself if that's true. Yeah. So will your business fail if this person becomes a money coach? No. Because? Because I'm a fabulous money coach. And? People will come to me for a different reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because? Because... They trust me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, that I'm just kind of make, I'm just going off with this little story that I need to just kind of like, whoa, like it's not true. Yeah. Okay. So, um, are you insignificant? No. Because? Because I have so many years of experience. I have lots of designations and I have an established business. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Do you matter? Yes. Because? Because I'm a human being and I, and <laughs> like I, I matter because I'm sitting here breathing and yeah. yeah, I care so much about my clients and I'm so passionate about what I do. Do you matter to other people? Yes, absolutely. Because? Because I take really, really good care of them and they learn a ton from me. Okay. 
So step two is asking yourself if it's true or if it's a lie, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think we've established that this is imposter syndrome, not true. Totally. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Step three is to prove it. So right. how do you prove it? Do you have testimonials that you can read right now? Yes. Yeah. That's Let's a good see idea. it. Pull something up. Let's do it. Okay. Oh goodness. Okay. Um, and you know what? I haven't gotten these on my website. So um, da, 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 let me just bring hers up because that one was so beautiful. Well, this one's quite long, mm -hmm. but read it. Um, Linda was recommended to me by another coach who sensed my relationship with money could use some exploration. During our first session, Linda was able to help me pinpoint some distorted beliefs that were contributing to feelings of shame about money um, not managing it, blah, 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 just things that were going on with her. The self-assessment exercises she provided were so helpful in helping me understand the origins of my relationship with money. Linda also provided me with accountability, encouragement to complete some overdue um, bookkeeping tasks. Through my work with her, I was able to gain powerful insight into how I relate to money and dramatically decrease my feelings of money mm. shame. Linda's non-judgmental, skillful, and professional style was exactly what I needed to clarify the barriers to having a healthy relationship with money. I highly recommend her to anyone looking to do the same. Yeah. Yeah. That was a big one, but yeah, that's my latest one. Yeah. Yeah. Was it, let me read another one. I came to Linda because I felt paralyzed about looking at my finances. She took me from shaming myself for my financial past and living in scarcity to transforming my spending plan into an intentional practice to nourish, nourish my recovery. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at your money, if, if looking at your money brings up all the things, I highly recommend Linda to support you on your financial journey. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I like that. That I liked reading those and I'll go back and find some more. And yeah. So the next step is to get into action. Yes. Get into the magic of what you do. Yes. So how can you get into action around this today? I think that like I did a ton of journaling this morning, um, like kind of just connecting mm -hmm. with my heart about it. Yeah. And this helped. Um, and I'm gonna, that roadmap, I'm going to pull it out. And like, I, ha I now have like my, um, I'm going to start a group coaching in about a month. Like yeah. I'm going to plan a bunch of stuff and just have my content and get visible. Yeah. Get visible. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that something that you could do potentially right now is put some of those testimonials sprinkled on your website. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. I need to do that. Yes. And you can just take excerpts of, of them, like the key, key thing, right? Yes. Um, one of the things that I do on my site is I have an actual testimonial page. And so I will sprinkle the testimonials in, in pieces around my site. And then I direct them to the testimonial page if they want to read more. So you could okay. do that if you want have a whole page. Okay. Yeah. The other thing is why not take some of those testimonials and turn them into social media posts? Okay. Oh, I love that. And then I would love for you to, you don't have to create content, but pull one of your favorite pieces of content out and reshare it and attach okay. a testimonial to it. Okay. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? So remember that when imposter syndrome is hitting, number one is to recognize the self-talk, mm -hmm. write it all down. Yeah. Number two, ask yourself if it's truth or a lie. Right. And sometimes it could be true. Like, for example, you might say to yourself, I'm not qualified to do this. Mm -hmm. And then you might go, do you know what? I feel like I need to learn a little bit more about this thing before I feel confident talking about it. So then that's the truth. So then find out, find out, do the learning you got to do. Right. Right. But most of the time it's a lie. Sometimes there's a bit element of truth where you can get, like you can improve your skills or whatever. Most of the time it's a lie. So right. we want to get that, that we want to challenge ourselves in the lie and start to see the lie for what it is, which is childhood trauma. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> totally. And this is actually a piece of it is yeah. that she took a designation through the trauma of money Institute. Yeah. And so I've been so drawn to trauma work. Yeah. Um, and I always kind of have done it in my practice, but when now all of a sudden, because they did this big, like mental health Monday thing. And yeah. so a lot of the other coaches are interested in doing the designation through there. And I'm thinking like, should I do the designation? Mm, but okay. it's like, 
Yeah, but I'm like, I don't know if I financially really, if it's a great idea right now, yeah. but at the same time, like, will it help support me, my business in the future and make this investment now? I don't really know what to do about that piece. Well, do you need it? No. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you yeah. just taking it because of imposter syndrome? Yes. Thank you. You're yeah. Okay. That's what I needed. <laughs> totally. I don't need it. Cause I know that stuff anyways. Yeah. You've been doing yeah. it. Yeah. So this is why, see, again, this is another element. I feel like I need this program. And then you ask yourself, actually, I don't. This is just imposter syndrome, right? Totally. Yeah, that's and exactly so, right? And so then we want to get into where we prove it wrong. And so reading yes. testimonials, I like to go back and read old co like content that I've created to remind myself, oh, no, I know what I'm talking about. Like, yes. this is good, right? Yes. And then number three is to get into action. And that's, and that's because, you know, Yes, create content. Yes, share content, but also hop on the phone with somebody and coach them. Do a Facebook live and take them through a model of some sort. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like literally I want you to physically do what you do. Okay. Because in the doing of what you do is when you remember that you're good at what you do. Right. Right. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. I love it. Yeah. Love it. All right. How do you feel? Good. Yeah. Okay. And I, and it just like, it happened yesterday. And then I tried to talk to my husband about it and he went off in a weird direction. I'm oh, like, no. No, 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 we're not talking about this anymore. And yeah. <laughs> and I felt it. And then I was like, no, Linda freaking pick up your, sh like, let's go. Yeah. So my word determination is kind of my yeah. word right now. So imposter syndrome, when it hits all the self-talk comes up and we tend to do one of two things we crumble under it. We believe it and we crumble under it and yes. we hide, right? And we, we give up, we hide, we become less visible. We think terrible things. We lose a lot of sleep. You know, we think terrible things about ourselves Yes. or we ignore it and right. we fake it till you make it, ignore right. it. And that doesn't help either because it's still there and it's still influencing the way that you're showing up and the choices you're making. So true. Yes. So the best thing to do is to write it down, is to get it out of your head, talk to somebody, write it down, talk to somebody who, like you said, who's going to get it right. Yes. Yeah. Write it down, you know, self-coach yourself here, write it down, yeah. ask yourself what's true. What's a lie. Yes. Right. Yeah. And then get the proof that you are good at what you do and then get back into action where you're physically doing the thing that you do, coaching somebody, doing a live, doing a something, getting on a pot, like something where you're physically doing it so that you can be back in the like, oh no, no, I'm good. Like I'm in that, that magical yeah. space of being good at what I do. Those Perfect. are the four steps, right? I love it. All right, good. Awesome. Do you feel, okay. and, 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 you know, competition is a thing. Like there's, there's, there's room for everybody. There really is. I know. And that's why it was like, I actually had to take a step back and say yeah. like, I'm actually really lucky. It's only been me for so long. Yeah. Right. And it just happens to be that like the founder is yeah. one that's doing it so that that's what the really hard part was, Yeah. but she's included me in it. Like I knew she was doing it. We had a great yeah. conversation about it, but it's still, it, yeah. But yeah. Well, because it, I'm sure if you track back to like childhood memories of being picked last if this other person always nailing it and you getting ignored or you know what I mean like I have so many memories from my childhood of like there's this one that I always it always comes up when these kinds of things hit I was in a my best friend and I were both in a play and we got the same role but we had different nights um but because she had a figure skating schedule that because she was a competitive skater um I really liked the people I was with and I thought that they were better <laughs> performers like they were be they were stronger singers stronger performers and she had to do her, her, uh, not, what are they called? And they're not practices, rehearsals, rehearsals. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So she, yep. like when you practice with your, with your, she couldn't do it on a certain night because of her skating lessons. So instead of us just switching nights, they made us switch swap actual team, like swap plays. Like, so I was at the different oh, wow. people and she was with mine. And so hers, to, in my opinion, as a 12 year old, you know, right. they were stronger singers and better. And I was stuck with these weaker singers because of course I wouldn't get to have the winning better performers. She would, of course she would. Right. Cause right. that was the mental, that was the model. That was the belief in me. Right. right. And so whenever in now as an adult, when I get stuck with 
less, you know, people that aren't as good, that's the thing that comes up, right? And so you have to constantly go back to go, what, what is a memory from my childhood where this feels very familiar? So and true. what is the story that I'm telling myself being stuck with having mm-hmm. lesser than never being, you know, people bending over backwards for somebody else because she's better. She gets everything. Then I don't get anything. Right. 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 These yes, are uncomfortable yeah. things to deal with, especially as an adult where we think we should be above feeling these petty thoughts. Mm. Right. But it's, but it's just childhood trauma and it's just so true. funky beliefs that we think are real. Yes. yes. And so we have to bring that up and out. Right. Yeah. Good old trauma. <laughs> trauma. <laughs> right. Exactly. But then when you kind of look at it and you go, is that real? Well, no, that's not real. That was the, the 12 year old, you know, who also would have been traumatized at that point, dealing with things and exactly. Right. And so, yes. So when you think, well, of course she's going to do better and she's going to get it. She's, you know, you've got to look at where that comes from. If you want you, it's, you're open to look at where For that sure. comes yeah, from. I, yeah. I'm, I'm a good trauma looker yeah. at her. <laughs> and then be like, okay, so is that what's going, you know? Um, and, and also in business, yeah, it is sucky when somebody who's more established comes into your lane, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, and, you know, remembering that there's room for everybody Mm. and people will do business with you because they know you, they like you and they trust you. You're a specific flavor that your PPCs, your clients are going to want. She is a specific flavor that her clients are going to want. And there's room for chocolate and vanilla. Yes, yes. (laughs) Right? Yes. People will choose who's right for them, which means that the only thing that you can do is be vocal, be visible, be authentic, Mm -hmm. and share your true voice and your passion so that people can find you. Beautiful. And what imposter syndrome is going to want you to do is to shrink. And that's the opposite of we want. We want you to shine. But we want to shine as you and not as somebody who feels threatened or less than. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Thank you. That did help. Good. Absolutely. All right. So good. Okay, friends. That was some that was some powerful, if not quick and efficient coaching there. Were you able to see how quickly once Linda started to get out the things that she was feeling, that self-talk that was in her head, how quickly she saw that, you know what, it wasn't even true. So much of imposter syndrome is a lie and it is our job to acknowledge that and to undo these lies so we can get back into action. Let's talk about what you just heard there with my four steps for ditching imposter syndrome. Number one is to recognize when imposter syndrome is messing with you. What are your signs? and symptoms. Now, we talked about that at the beginning of this podcast where I said it can make you play small, it can make you overcompensate and be aggressive, it could make you procrastinate and not do the thing you have to do because you don't want to put it out there. (laughs) It could make you feel like there's a tornado of confusion in your head, you're lacking clarity and you don't know how to get your way through. As I said, it can show up with you shrinking and not showing up online, not being as visible. Oftentimes, imposter syndrome will directly show up in you shrinking your yourself and making yourself smaller and as I said less of a target. So step number one is to recognize when imposter syndrome is messing with you and recognizing the signs and symptoms for you. Step number two is to recognize the lies. What is imposter syndrome? What is your Frank whispering in your ear? Write down that self-talk like we did with Linda. You're going to want to ignore it, numb it, push it down because much like he who shall not be named, if there's any Harry Potter fans listening, there is this belief that when we name something, we give it power. But in this case, it is the opposite. When you name the self-talk in your imposter syndrome mode, in your self-doubt mode, you neutralize it. You take away its power because you very quickly see that it is not true. And I'll tell you, if there is any truth, that's okay. If you genuinely have self-doubt because you are stretching out of your comfort zone and your skills need to be sharpened and practiced a little bit more, 
then that's great. Practice away. If you are moving out of your zone of genius into an area where maybe you don't even want to be working and self-doubt's creeping in, well then go ahead and own that. I don't want to work in this space. This isn't my zone of genius and I don't want to be here. You know, when you write it down, really look at it and go, where are the lies and where are the truth? If there's any truth, figure out what you need to level up, to hire someone to support you, to outsource it or take it off your plate, whatever is going to help you move through that. And if it's a lie, guess what? We're gonna move into step number three, which is prove it wrong. Prove the lie wrong. Do what we did with Linda, read testimonials. Read what others have to say when they've worked with you. Read your old blogs, listen to old podcasts, or watch videos of you where you can see your brilliance in action. Reflect back on those whose lives you've genuinely impacted. Fill your conscious and your subconscious with the proof that you need to remember that, yep, you know what you're doing, you are dang good at what you do, and you are genuinely impacting people's lives in a positive way. And that takes us to step number four, which is get into the magic of what you do. The quickest way out of self-doubt is to flex your brilliance by getting back to work. Go do a Facebook or an Instagram live. Reach out and get onto someone's podcast. Go into a Facebook group and help someone who's struggling with a problem that's in your zone of genius. Hop on a Zoom with someone and solve their problem, with consent obviously. Do anything that gets you back into action and into your zone of genius. Paid or unpaid, it's irrelevant. It's more about the action. So remember, the four steps. Number one, recognize when imposter syndrome is messing with you. What are your signs and symptoms? Number two, recognize the lies. Write out that self-talk and separate the lies from the truth. And then step number three, prove the lies wrong. Step number four is get back into the magic of what you do. Get into action. If you head on over to theradicalconnector.com forward slash podcast, you'll be able to access today's show notes where I've got a worksheet for you that you can download and use over and over again as many times as you need to get you unstuck out of imposter syndrome and back into the magic of what you do. If you're somebody who loves doing mindset work while growing your business, guess what? You are going to love my membership for first-time entrepreneurs. You get access to frameworks and templates to help you lay a strong business foundation in the idea stage. Obviously, you get coaching and business skills to help you get customers and make money the quick and easy way in the growth stage. And you get support as you learn how to outsource, automate, and amplify the heck out of your top sellers in the scale stage. We focus on using online tools to get customers so you can grow your business from anywhere in the world. And obviously, we meet several times each month for group coaching, accountability, and content batching co-working days. And as always, because we are all about the work less, play more philosophy over here, it is all about how you can ditch 90% of that busy work, stick to the activities that are actually going to grow your business so you can get back to having a life and doing what matters most to you. You can access the imposter syndrome worksheets and find out more about my membership on my website, theradicalconnector.com forward slash podcast. Be sure to check out Linda's Instagram over at Linda Parmar Coach. That's L-I-N-D-A. P-A-R-M-A-R-C-O-A-C-H. She supports women in recovery to heal their relationship with money and she is dang good at what she does. Friends, thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Thank you so much to Linda for being vulnerable, being real, and letting us share our conversation with the world, with all of you for your benefit. Until next time, friends, thank you so much for listening. Happy connecting. I will see you online. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you want to learn more about joining my community for new entrepreneurs who want to ditch the busy work and discover how to work less and play more all the way to six figures and beyond, please visit theradicalconnector.com. Check out today's show notes for all the juicy resources we covered. If you loved what you've heard, subscribe and leave a review. Happy connecting. I will see you online.